I am always amazed how many different type of problems you can make with binary trees, right? Since it is a non-linear data structure, you can play around with it so much. In one such problem, invert a binary tree, you have to mirror a binary tree rather than flipping it upside down. I know the name is a little confusing, but that is what inverting a binary tree in this problem actually means. So what can we do about it? Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, I will tell you how you can go about approaching this problem because in the beginning it feels very overwhelming. Then we will try to form the most obvious recursive solution and then I'm going to show you a solution that is iterative and very very easy to understand. After that, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let us quickly make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a binary tree and you have to invert it. And then you have to return me the new tree. Correct? So this problem is pretty straightforward, right? And it is asked in a lot of different ways. It could be asked that, okay, mirror a binary tree or flip a binary tree. So what is actually happening over here? Let us look at our first test case. So in our first test case, you can see that you have a binary tree in front of you and you have to invert it. So inverting actually means that you can assume that there is a mirror right over here and then you have to see its reflection. How will the tree look like? So if there is a mirror, then what will happen? Both of these elements will get flipped, correct? So the inversion or the mirror or the flipping of this binary tree, it will actually start to look like this. So you can see that root remains at the same place and both of these nodes have swapped. So in this case, this tree will be your answer and you have to return this. Similarly, let us look at one more test case. So in this particular test case, you can see that your tree has expanded a bit, right? And once again, to invert it, you can assume that, okay, you have some kind of a mirror over here and then you have to look at the reflection of this tree. So try to think what will happen. Both of these nodes will get flipped and all of these nodes, they will also get flipped completely, correct? So for this particular test case, you can see that in my result, node four remains at its current place, node seven and node two have swapped and so are all the nodes that were in the most bottom level, right? So if nine was at the extreme right, it has come at the extreme left. So for this particular test case, this entire tree will be your answer. And for all your edge cases, for example, if you have a null node, that means no tree is present, then yeah, obviously you will have to return a null as your answer because you cannot flip or invert a null tree, right? So now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out again. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Okay, so let us take up a sample tree, correct? And you have to invert it. Before you even start writing or thinking about the code, first of all, you must try to think that, okay, how will I iterate over this structure? Because you will have to traverse through entire elements, right? And then you have to invert them. So whenever you see problems like this, if it's an array, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? You will need to decide that, okay, how will I go through my array? You will start from the first element and then travel all the way to the end, correct? Similarly, if you have a linked list, then you will start from the head node and keep on doing a next. If it's a stack, you will do push and pop operations. And in a queue, also you will do push and pop operations, right? So given such kind of a tree, how do you traverse a tree? Correct? So you can traverse a tree in many different ways. There is in-order traversal, pre-order traversal, post-order traversal, level-order traversal, correct? So many different techniques. So first of all, you need to finalize, okay, how do I even begin to traverse this tree? So try to think, what do we have to do in this problem? In this problem, you have to swap nodes at each level, right? So two will come at the place of seven and seven will come at the place of two. Similarly, for the last row as well, this entire direction of the nodes will change, right? So that tells you something. What you can do is you can start going level by level and start to swap the nodes. Probably that can help you. For example, if I am at the root node, then I don't have to do anything and I can just write down four over here, right? Now, what you can do? Now you can say that, okay, now I will go to my second level and whatever is at the second level, I will swap it. 
So that means you're going to swap 7 over here and then 2 over here. So you can see that this can form a solution. Going forward, you will go on to the third level and then you will perform some sort of swaps. Correct? So that is the basic idea how you should begin attacking this problem. You know that you have to traverse this tree and you might think that, okay, a level order traversal technique might be helpful to actually arrive at your answer, right? And since this is a tree data structure, trees are notoriously famous for recursion, right? So first thing that should come to your mind is, okay, what if I try recursing at each level? That could be some approach, right? So let us try to form a solution using recursion. On the right, you have a sample tree that is represented from the root, correct? And then this root is passed in as an input parameter to the function invert tree recursive. So what we're going to do over here is we will go step by step and then populate this function. You're going to see how straightforward this is. In a recursive function, what is the first thing that you do? First of all, you need to have a base condition, right? So for this particular problem, if you have a null tree, then what will be its inversion? It will be a null tree again, right? So that can be my perfect base condition. So I add a condition, if root equals to null, just simply return null, correct? And now try to think, how does recursion in a tree actually work? Suppose you have a tree that is represented by root, and then you have some left subtree, and you will have a right subtree, correct? And the general idea of applying recursion will be, that you apply the recursive technique on the root, then you will try to apply the recursive technique on the left child and the right child. And once all of this is completed, you will ultimately get your answer. That is the idea, correct? So now in this problem, you took care of the root value, correct? And what do you have to do? You need to determine, okay, what will be my left child and what will be my right child? So I have two variables, tree node left and tree node right. And now we have to populate some values to it. So first of all, I will apply recursion to the left node or the left subtree. So this is the place where I apply recursion and assign it to the left of root. And then I will apply the same recursive technique on the right subtree and I will call this my right node, correct? So what will happen is the entire recursive technique, it will get applied on the left subtree and on the right subtree. And what will happen is this will keep on recursing until you reach the very end. And when it eventually returns, what do you need to do? You need to swap the left and right children of the node, correct? So what this will do is it will swap three with one and one with three. Similarly, when the right tree recursion completes, it will swap six with nine and nine with six, correct? So this will now propagate up and then it's gonna swap two with seven and then seven with two, right? So you will see that, okay, the recursion has ultimately completed and then it goes all the way back up. And once it goes back up, you simply need to return the root. And once the root is returned, ultimately you will have your complete inverted binary tree. So this is how a recursive solution looks like. And I know it is pretty straightforward. It is really easy to understand and visualize, correct? But I don't like recursive solutions in general because recursive solutions are a little hard to debug. You need to actually write down and see all the values to understand what is actually happening. So definitely, if you think, we can go back to our original approach where we were going level by level. And let us try to use a level order traversal technique and see if we can come up with a solution. Once again, I have my same sample tree in front of me that we have to invert, correct? And this is the queue that I'm going to use for my level order traversal technique. If you're new to level order traversal techniques, I will highly recommend you to check out my video on level order traversal first. That is going to simplify things very much. And this is going to simplify your understanding as well. If you do not do level order traversal, I will still try to make sure that you understand what is actually happening. So how does the level order traversal work? I have this queue in front of me and what will I do? I will take the root of this tree and I'm going to add it to my queue. Correct. And now what we usually do is we try to pop out elements from this queue and then look at its child node. We add these child nodes to the queue once again, and then we will keep on popping out from the queue so that we know that, okay, we have traversed the entire tree, right? So now that we have an element in the queue, just pop it out. And then what you're going to do is, you will look at the child nodes. So this node has 
two child nodes, two and seven. Two is on the left and seven is on the right. So what I'm going to do is, whatever node I popped out, just swap both of its child nodes. So what will happen is, seven will get in the left node and two will get in the right node. Correct? And following a level order traversal technique, what you're going to do? You are going to add both of these nodes to your queue, right? Because now you have to process them. Go ahead now. You see that your queue is not empty. So you are going to pop an element. As soon as you pop an element, two gets popped out. And that means we have to work upon this. Once again, what I need to do is, whatever is the popped element, just swap its child nodes. So what are the child nodes of two? They are one and three, right? So I'm just going to swap them. One gets to the right and three gets to the left, correct? And now once you're done with it, you are going to add these two nodes to your queue. Move ahead now, pop the next element that is in the queue, that is seven. So seven gets popped out. That means we have to process this seven now, right? And once again, what will you do? You will just swap the two child nodes. So if I swap both of them, nine will come to the left and six will get to the right, correct? And both of these nodes, they will get added in my queue, correct? Now, your queue is still not empty. So you will keep on popping these elements one by one. But none of these nodes have any children. So you don't have to perform any swapping. And ultimately, this queue will be eventually empty. And once it is empty, you need to stop, right? And now just compare both of them. You have actually formed an inverted tree, right? Or you have found out the mirror. You can see that 2 and 7 were swapped. And all of these numbers were also swapped, right? So you can safely say that with this level order traversal technique, you were easily able to find your inverted tree. Now let us quickly do a dry run of this approach and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have the sample tree that is passed in as an input parameter to the function invert tree. Correct. Oh, and by the way, this complete course and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving on, first of all, we add a condition just to check if our root node is null. If it is an empty tree, just simply return an empty tree because you cannot invert an empty tree. Correct. Moving forward, what do we do? We first create a queue that we will use to pop out every element. And the first thing that we add to this queue is the root node. So as soon as I add this node, my queue starts to look like this. Correct. Because four is now in the queue. And next, what we will do? We will start a while loop until my queue is completely empty. And in this queue, we are going to process each element. So first of all, what do we do? We take out a node from our queue. Correct. So four gets popped out. And then, as you know, we have to swap both of its child nodes. So I use a temporary variable to swap both of them. So temp equals to node.left. And then I will assign node.left to node.right and node.right will be equal to temp. So what does this do? It swaps two and seven. Correct. And then once you're done with swapping, you need to add both of these child nodes back to your queue, right? Because you have to process further elements. So now when I will add these nodes, two will get added to my queue over here and seven will get added as the next element, right? So once again, you see that your queue is not empty and this loop will run again. So this time two will get popped out. And what you're going to do again, you will swap its nodes. So both one and three will get swapped out. And then these one and three will get added to the queue for further processing. So you can see that this will keep on happening and ultimately your tree will be inverted. At the very end, you just return your root and that will be your inverted tree. The time complexity of this solution will be order of n, where n is the total number of nodes in the binary tree. And the space complexity of this solution will also be order of n because you need some extra space to store that queue and have all the elements in there. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that when it comes to problem on trees, I know that recursive solutions seem very small and pretty straightforward, right? For example, in this case, but recursive versus iterative. First of all, an iterative solution is easier to follow and easier to debug. So whenever you get a chance, try to come up with an iterative approach. Then you can actually see what is happening throughout your code. And also, when you are coming up with a recursive solution, you take up some memory in your CPU. 
because you have to maintain that recursive stack somewhere, right? You are not maintaining it in your code. Your CPU is doing it for you. So if your input test case is very large, then certainly you will get a stack overflow exception. And that is because all of that recursive memory that gets stored. And you know that it is not easy to debug, right? So how many other problems have you seen where a recursive solution seems very, very obvious and writing an iterative approach takes some time. But did you find that, hey, with an iterative approach, you were able to visualize it better? While going throughout this video, did you face any problems throughout? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. I also have a website studyalgorithms.com where you can find other such problems. Also let me know what problems do you want me to solve next? What do you want to learn next? Until then, see ya!